Praise God. Good morning, everyone. Hallelujah. So glad you're joining me this, this beautiful, beautiful day. This is the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice. We're going to be glad in it this morning. Amen. Oh, I believe God's got something good for us this morning. He always does. Isn't God faithful? <laughs> God is so good. I'll tell you what. I, um, I just know that every one of us that's you know, God, God's showing me things, and, and I, um, I, I'm very, very grateful for all of you that are on here every morning. Um, I think, I think we, we, I don't think we really, really realize how much we really encourage each other, amen, when we gather together, and uh, there's a lot of folks coming on board right now, so I want to get right into this, this morning, I want to speak into your lives. I pray the Lord will use this time together to really speak into our hearts, amen, and to, and to, and to encourage everyone. And, and so many of you guys are already on. Cindy Garcia, Kay and Dre May, come on somebody. Lynn Bell, uh, and Elizabeth, God bless you. God bless you. Yvette Saunders, good to have you on board with us, with us this morning. And, um, and of course, just all of us, man. Call me Liz. Okay, Liz. <laughs> uh, Ivy McNeil. Amen. Good morning, Ivy. Sharon Johnson. You guys are awesome. Always faithful. I, I really appreciate all of us gathering together. Um, Lavette Thompson. God bless you. Michelle Williams. Uh, praise God. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Well, listen, I'm going to wanna get right into God's word. I, I want to just hope and pray that the word of God will just minister to our hearts. He's always faithful, so we know it will. But today I want to encourage you with this word, amen. Sulema, God bless you. Joe Wilson, Pastor Joe, praise the Lord. Glad you're with us this morning as well. Zaida Preston, uh, praise God. Lavette, good to have you. So listen, let's get right into this, Miss Peggy Morningstar. Today I want to encourage you, and this is the word that I believe that God has for us today, and it's this, be bold. Be bold. In Acts chapter 4, verse 31, here's what God's word has to say. After this prayer, the meeting place shook, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. Mm, come on, somebody. I love that. They prayed, the place shook, they were filled, and then they preached the word with boldness. You know, if you're taking notes, write this down. Prayer shakes things. Prayer shakes things. You know, prayer has an, a, a way of, of, of shaking our lives. You know, when you start praying to the Lord, God begins to shake our lives and things that, that don't belong there begin to fall off, amen? God begins to convict our hearts. He begins to minister to us in our weaknesses. And I believe that that is such a powerful thing that God does. So prayer, whenever we pray, it shakes us. It, it does something in us. that it, it, it draws us closer to God into a closer communication with him. Then it starts making us more like him and less like us. Come on, somebody. So, the, so our flesh and our thoughts and our heart and everything is impacted when we pray. And sometimes it's, it's done in a gentle way, but often, come on somebody, it shakes us on the inside. It helps us to confront our circumstances, confront ourselves, amen? And I think that's such an important thing to do because if you don't conquer, uh, you, you only conquer what you confront. Write that down. I only conquer what I confront. So some things in our lives have to be confronted and prayer has a way of bringing light to those things, amen? And then helping us to address them, to give us the power to engage those situations and begin to change, be more and more like Jesus. You know, prayer also shakes other people's lives. That's right. When you begin to intercede, when you begin to pray, listen, many of you probably either have seen it or heard it, or maybe during this time of prayer that we spend every morning, uh, you're starting to uh, talk to the people that you're interceding for, and you're starting to see a change in them. See, because prayer changes other people. Prayer uh, changes the people that we're praying for. 
I'm like, come on, somebody. At the end of the day, if you want to see a change in people's lives, if you want to see them come to Christ, if you want to see them healed and delivered, uh, if you want to see them set free from all their issues, begin to pray for them, right? Make them a target of your prayers. You know, it's a target in a positive way. Because I believe that the God will draw them in as you pray, amen, and heal them and touch them. Because your prayer, your prayer is powerful. In James 5, 16, it says, The effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. You see, the kingdom of God is, all, uh, the, I'm sorry, the kingdom of, the, of darkness is also shaken. Come on, somebody. We change ourselves, we shake, God shakes us and what's inside of us. He begins to shake other people as well. And then he begins to shake the kingdom of darkness. Come on, somebody. The enemy is defeated. We serve a, def a defeated foe. So we just need to keep reminding him and, and through our prayers and through our attitudes, amen, and through our faith, we're able to overcome the enemy. So you see, we need to continue, amen, to pray because Prayer shakes the powers of darkness. You see, Satan hates a praying Christian. See, most Christians that don't pray, most Christians that uh, go to church occasionally, uh, most Christians that fellowship once in a while, the enemy's not afraid of them. You see, at the end of the day, they may, you know, they're, they're going to heaven, but they're not impacting anybody else to go with them. You see, a, a Christian that begins to pray, begins to seek God, begins to become, get better, right? If we if we know better, if if we know if we, if we know what to do, right? It, we should be able to uh, live a better life, right? As we get closer to God, and we 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 exercise and implement His principles in our lives. See, the Lord wants to make sure that you and I get to a place where that's right, where the enemy doesn't like us. Then when the, listen, the enemy comes against us whether he likes you or not. But you know what? I want to be the kind of Christian that the enemy doesn't like, but the enemy fears. Because the enemy understands that we have authority over him. That we're not subject to his devices. Amen? See, and, and I love this because prayer leads to outpouring. Put that down right now if you're taking notes. Prayer leads to outpouring. See, whenever you read the Bible, whenever people are gathered together in one accord to pray, you'll, you'll see an outpouring, right? In Acts chapter 2, prior to this situation right here, they were all in the upper room praying. And of course, the Holy Spirit filled the room and they were all baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. You see, that the power of God in prayer, see, prayer le releases the outpouring of God. The Bible says they were all filled, not some, but all of them were filled in that room, amen, as they began to pray. And you see that outpouring of prayer, that outpouring of the Holy Spirit leads to boldness. Write that down. Outpouring leads to boldness. See, when the outpouring happens, folks, and the Holy Spirit begins to pour himself out, then we become bold. We become bold as lions. We, 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 we Listen, we, we share and we talk in love and grace and humility. But there's a certain boldness, a certain conviction that comes upon us because the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit leads to boldness. So we need an outpouring every single day. Every single morning, we need a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit, amen? And, and that's why it's so important to gather together consistently and constantly so that an outpouring of the Holy Spirit will manifest in our lives, amen? So be bold. Be bold uh, with God's word. Be bold with God's love. Man, be bold with God's grace and mercy, amen? And you know, part of that boldness is kind of what we do every day. Start each day in the presence of God. That's right, write that down. Start each day in the presence of God. You know, faith comes by hearing, right? And hearing by the word of God. See, Psalms 5, verse 3. And this is, I love this because David understood this, the psalmist. He understood the power of being in the presence of the Lord. See, uh, it says right here in Psalms 5, 3, listen to my voice in the morning. Oh, come on, somebody. Lord, each morning I bring my request to you and wait expectantly. Oh, my goodness. I could preach on that just all morning right now. Listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning I bring my request to you and wait expectantly. You see, in his presence, there's power. Write that down. In his presence, there's power. See, I love that. 
because the, the Bible says that I bring my request to him in the morning and I wait expecting. Oh man, that is so good, y'all. Sure, listen, we wait. We're waiting on God's timing, but we're expecting our prayers to be answered. Absolutely. And listen, God answers every question, doesn't he? It's a yes. Amen. We get the green light. It may be a no. It may be a red light. No, stop right there. We're not going there. Maybe not now. Maybe not yet. But at the end of the day, we know that God answers every prayer. And of course, he does say, wait. And sometimes wait is the hardest one, isn't it? I mean, I could take a yes or a no, but man, wait. Like, I'm not sure. I'm just waiting. But listen, wait expectantly. That's the key word in that, in that particular verse is you wait expecting God to do something good. Even when he says no to what you're asking, he'll say yes to what he wants to do. Come on, somebody. So God's going to move in one way or the other, whether it's, uh, it depends on whether it's his will or your will. And I guarantee you, if it's his will, then you wanna, you're going to walk in victory and in grace and in mercy as well. Amen. Listen, build your daily agenda around your specific prayer time. That's right. Make sure you lock that thing in, man. Make sure that when it's time to pray, it's time to pray. It's not time to do other things or straighten things around the house. It's time to lock yourself in with the Lord, amen, and build the rest of your agenda around prayer. Make sure it's on your schedule. It's an appointment with God that you keep every single day. See, make it a priority of your day. See, when you make prayer a priority, you make God a priority. All oh, right, write that down. When you make prayer a priority, you make God a priority. And see, that God and God wants us to make him to, to put him first in our lives because when we when we put him in that place, when we give him the first fruits of our day as an offering unto him, then God honors that in such a great and mighty way. So you'll be amazed at the power of keeping your daily appointment with God. Oh my goodness, when you do this on a daily basis and you keep that daily appointment, God's gonna show up every time. And the more you do it, the more familiar you are with God. The closer and in, more intimate you get with God, the more he knows you, amen? He, he knows your heart. Listen, the Bible says he knows it, but he wants to hear it from you. A relationship is about communicating, right, with each other. And I believe that's what God desires. God longs to have a powerful, intimate relationship with you. And setting a prayer time was one of the great secrets in the lives of prayer champions. That's right, when you read through history, you'll see all these great men of God, and they, were all, they all had one major thing in common. They were men and women of prayer. And prayer is the key. Come on, somebody. Prayer is the key to unlocking all that God has for you. And listen, write this down as we go forward. Intentional prayer creates intended results. Oh, man. You got to write that down as we're taking notes. Intentional prayer creates intended results. Be intentional every day, and God will slowly move your heart to align with his. And of course, you'll be praying in his will, and God always answers every prayer that's aligned to his will, amen? And you know, so setting, setting that, that time of prayer in the morning really is about moving toward order. Moving toward order. See, it's about the first fruits, right? We talked about that, about the first fruits of our giving. It's not just tithing, but giving the first fruits. In other words, it's the first check you write. It's the first entry you make. Uh, uh, it's the first thing that you want to do when God blesses you with with uh, with sustenance, with income, with whatever He has. You know, it's first fruit. So it's the same way with being putting God a priority. You're moving towards ordering and towards order, right? Towards putting your day in order. See, look what Genesis says. Genesis one thirty one says this, and God saw everything that He made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning or the sixth day. You see, God was a God of order. God intentionally, even during his creation, even when you read the book of Genesis, everything he did was done in order. What he created one day set the stage to what he was creating the next day. Come on, somebody. And then it just kind of built all the way to his ultimate creation. 
you and I, that's right. So he created all the things that we would need in the first five days so that the sixth day when he created you, his masterpiece, everything was in order, everything was in place, we could breathe, we had things to eat. I mean, literally everything was created by God in such an amazing order. And that's why we're all here today. And God, I think God desires us to continue to keep things in the right order because order eliminates wasted time. Oh man, write this down, y'all. This is practical, but this is good. Order eliminates wasted time. See, when you put things down, when you put a plan together, when you write things on paper, not just get up every morning and start running, because what happens is so many, so often when we do that, then we're just subject to all the issues of the day, right? I mean, things take us out. We're just, we got a hose, man. We're just turning off fires all day. When God wants us to accomplish certain things, we should want to accomplish certain things, not just what the day has, has to offer, but things that help us for the future as well. See, order increases productivity. That's right. That's why things are put on a schedule and put with time, right? You schedule it, you put it in, you schedule in your breaks, maybe certain things that you're trying to accomplish. I mean, some of you, some of you may put, uh, I listen to YouTube channels, right? I listen to YouTube preaching and teaching, and I'm also taking some some some, some schooling on, on trading and other things. Like that. But I schedule it, so I say, you know, at this time, I'm gonna take 30 minutes for me. I'm going to take the third so I can pour into myself, amen, and be able to be stronger and increase my own, increase my productivity because your productivity increases your contribution. That's right. You get to contribute more to people around you. You, you continue to contribute more into yourself, amen, and, and see your productivity increases that. And of course, it increases your contribution. And why is that so important? because your contribution increases the rewards you receive in life. Oh my goodness, come on somebody. Your contribution increases the rewards you receive in life. What you contribute, what you bring to the table, your gifts, your talents, your, your time, your treasures, your talents, all these things you bring to the table, that's right, including, come on somebody, including contributing financially. Because when you contribute financially, rewards will come your way. The Bible says that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek after him, amen, and seek his will and follow his principles, amen, and the, and the principles of con contribution brings rewards. Oh, write that down. Contribution brings rewards. So when you engage things, God blesses you. And listen, order is very simple. Order is doing the right thing at the right time in the right place. Oh, I got to repeat that. Order is doing the right thing at the right time in the right place. So when you create order in your life, you become so much more effective. Amen. And, and, and then I want to close with this last point. And this is so important. Write this down. Recognize the law of predictability. Recognize the law of predictability. All these points that I just talked to all kind of layer on themselves because when you create order, you can predict your future. Oh, come on, come on. Somebody just said, oh, whoa, 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 time out, Pastor. Look what God's word says, Galatians 6, 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Oh, listen, that's the law of predictability. Your daily habits are carving out an irre irreversible future for you. Your daily habits carve out your future. That's right. So you can, you can predict your future by your daily habits. Whatever you, the Bible says, whatever you sow, you're going to reap. So if you sow good things, then you can expect good things for your future. However, if you sow things that are negative, things that, that, that are not pleasing to the Lord, then your harvest is going to come up and you're going you're gonna to reap what you sow no matter what. That, that's a universal principle. Amen. It's a universal principle. So at the end of the day, if you do the right things all day, you can predict that in the future, good things are going to start happening in your life. That's right. Because God, reward, God rewards those, right, that, that seek after him. So the question is this, are you heading towards what you really want? 
Are you heading towards what you really want? And then, and then, and then when you get to where you're going, where will you be? Where, where, will you, where is it that you want and where, where do you want to be? I mean, at the end of the day, if you don't know those things, if you don't have goals set and things you want to do for your future, then listen, your future is predictable. You're not going to go anywhere. Come on, somebody. You'll be like that hamster inside that wheel working so hard and not getting anywhere. See, the law of predictability says what I do today, I can count on for tomorrow. See, what, I, what the things that I do today, I'll be blessed for tomorrow. See, and, and, then, and then here's the, the last question. I answered uh, three questions. Uh, uh, what, what, you know, are you heading towards what you really want? When you get there, where will you be? And when you get what you want, what will you have? What will you have? Come on, somebody. What will you have when you get to what you really want? Because you need to decide that right now. You need to decide and put in writing where it is you want to, what it is that you want to do. Put it in writing, write the vision down. Because listen, champ, write this down if you're taking notes. I'm gonna, then I'm gonna get right into our prayer time. Champions make decisions that create the future they desire. Oh man, I'll tell you what, today you're getting gold. I know, listen, God is doing and speaking clearly. Champions make decisions that create the future they desire. See, so many people just make decisions just to get through day by day. They never make a decision that can impact your future. And sometimes it may take a sacrifice. It may be difficult. You know, I know people who've gone, who worked all day, then, then went to school and, and then worked hard at school. And they, they had a job. They went to school. They had children. They had families. They paid a price, but they made a decision that would create a future they desire. So when they graduated from school, they had an education. They got promoted, and they created a future they desire. So listen, make a decision to sometimes make a make a, a sacrifice at times to create that future. Nothing comes easy, amen. And the bigger the dream, the bigger sacrifice you may have to make. But listen, when you get there, hallelujah, it's gonna be worth it, amen. It's gonna be worth the sacrifice that you make. Even staying at home with your children. It's a sacrifice. I know it is. But man, when you see those children growing up and you see them in the fear of the Lord because you planted those seeds early in their lives, you'll realize that the future you want to see for them will manifest itself because you made the sacrifice and you made the decision to create a future for them as well. Well, praise God, man. Listen, I want to get right into our time of prayer this morning. I'm so glad. I know, I know. listen, God spoke to me uh, this morning as I was ministering to you as well. There's certain things that I want to do for my future, and I know it's going to take time, but I'm making the decisions now to make the sacrifices and do the things that may be uncomfortable, but they're going to design the future that I intend. I'm going to be intentional. Listen, be intentional today and get everything that God has for you. Amen. Praise God. Let's lift up our hands right now, wherever you are. Just begin to praise him. Just begin to lift up your hands. Begin to glorify his name. Heavenly Father, we're just grateful. We're grateful to be in your presence this morning. We thank you, Father God, for your word. Your word, Lord God, it's a two-edged sword, Lord Father. And we thank you, Lord God, that it penetrates the deepest, most inner part of our souls and our hearts and our minds. So in Jesus' name, oh God, we thank you, Lord God. And, and Father, fill us with your spirit so that we can be bold this morning. Help us be bold about the truth, Lord God. The world is so bold about their sin. Uh, the, all the sin that we lit here on, on television and, and, and on the news and all these, all these agendas that are being promoted, Lord God, that are so sinful and they're so bold with it, Lord God. In Jesus' name, help us to be just as bold for righteousness. Help us to be bold about God's word and, and to be bold about who you would want us to speak to, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, Father, give us a fresh outpouring of your spirit today. We need your Holy Spirit to be poured upon us, oh God, so that we can be 
Bo, Lord Father, and we know that boldness brings your power. It unleashes the anointing of the Holy Spirit in people's lives. So even as we pray, Lord God, things are shaken in our lives. Things are shaken in other people's lives. But more than that, the kingdom of darkness, hallelujah, devil, we put you on check today. In Jesus' name, we command you to take your hands off of our lives, off of our children, off of our possessions, all that we have. In Jesus' name, we take authority over you right now in boldness. In Jesus' name, we are not going to settle anymore for what's happening. We're going to create a future that we desire in Jesus' name. So, Father, thank you, Lord God, and help us to start every day, oh God, to start every day in God's presence. Oh, that his presence is what we'll seek every single day, like the air we breathe, oh God, that his presence, Lord God, will be something we desire every single day. To start our morning off in his presence, in his word, because his presence brings the power of God. It brings the anointing of God, oh Lord, and in Jesus' name, we need your anointing to get through every single day, oh God. So we thank you for your presence. In your presence, there's fullness of joy, oh God. That's what your word says, that in your presence, there's fullness of joy. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. So we know that in your presence, there is strength, Lord God. There's power and there's peace, Father. So thank you for your peace that surpasses all understanding that's found in your presence, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, lead, Lord Jesus. And Father, help us to continue to move towards order to continue to move, Lord God, not just, not just think about it, but begin to take action, begin to write down things, oh God, create schedules and create deadlines and, and create things that we need to do to continue to create order and create and to be able to do more in our lives, not just exist, oh God, but create a desired future for ourselves, Lord God, and order, Lord God, brings that, Lord Father. And we thank you that your order creates peace as well, Lord God because we know where we're going. We know where we're heading to, oh God. And in Jesus' name, we thank you because order uh, makes our lives predictable, oh God. That's right. Father, we thank you for, for the, the law of predictability, Lord God. We know that what we do daily, Father God, continues to create our future. We can predict our future by our habits and what we do every day. So in Jesus' name, Lord God, help us to make the sacrifices to, uh, today for a better tomorrow. Help us to make sacrifices and be intentional about what we need to do, Lord God. We don't want to keep getting what we're getting, so we just, we can't keep doing what we're doing, oh God, so help us in Jesus' name to create new habits, Father God, new things that will bring new rewards and new blessings into our lives, oh God. And Father, we just thank you for the victory today, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, that you hear our prayers today and that we can walk in victory. And right now we lay hands upon all the prayer requests that we brought before you this morning, oh God. And in Jesus' name, we thank you, Father, even now that you're answering our prayers, that you're touching our loved ones, that even now, Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray for salvation over all of those that need to be saved, that need healing. And we pray divine healing over bodies that are sick, over minds and hearts that are sick right now that need to be touched by you, oh God. Break every chain, oh God, of depression, Lord God. Tear down every wall of confusion right now in the name of Jesus. Let there be order in their lives, oh God, right now in Jesus' name, that they will find you, oh God, through the midst of of all their chaos, Father God, that they will become more than conquerors, Father, in Jesus' name. So we thank you for salvation and healing. We thank you for deliverance, for breaking chains, oh God, in people's lives. We thank you right now, Lord God, for your provision. Father, give us this day our daily bread, the things that we need daily. Provide them, Lord God. We just thank you for your promises because you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider this morning. And we pray for relationships to be healed and marriages and, and families, Lord God, to just come together, oh God, in Jesus' name. I thank you for jobs that are coming our way right now for opportunities, not just a job, but an opportunity, Lord God, to make a difference, Lord God, in Jesus' name. 
to, to be to prosper your people, Lord God. Bless them, prosper them financially. Open the windows of heaven as they give, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And I just thank you for your blessing. Even now, oh God, we receive promotions. We receive prosperity, Lord God. We receive it right now in Jesus' name. And Father, we just call it out right now, Father God. The wealth of the wicked shall come to the righteous. So even now, open doors, Father God, for wealth, Father God, in Jesus' name. That we can bless your work, that we can bless others as well. We can bless our families as well, Father. So we just thank you, Father God, for your promises this day. And we're always going to make sure, oh God, that you get all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Amen. Oof. Wow, the presence of the Lord is so powerful this morning. I'm so glad you joined me. Listen, I want to close with Psalms 110. That's right, Psalms 110. And Psalms 110 says this, The Lord said to my Lord, oh, look at this, Sit in the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet. Wow, this is such a prophetic word that God gives to Jesus about placing him at the right hand uh, and humble until uh, he humbles the, the enemies. But listen, today it's your promise as well to humble your enemies. Listen, there are people coming against you. The Bible says that God will bless those that bless you. He'll curse those that curse you. So know that God is in control, amen? And God's gonna do great and mighty things. And the Bible says that he'll make your enemies a footstool under your feet. You see, a footstool, uh, it's, it's designed to help you to reach higher. Come on, somebody. I have a footstool in my closet because I have to reach these things that are really high. That footstool, come on somebody, your enemies will become a stepping stone to your future. Your enemies will become a stepping stone, a footstool to take you to higher places in God. Oh, come on somebody, praise the Lord. Well, listen, God bless you. What a wonderful, wonderful day. Let me just pray the Lord's blessings over you today. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray you will bless my brothers and sisters, bless them and keep them. Shine your face upon them, be gracious to them, oh God. Father, lift up your countenance towards them and give them peace in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Listen, it's Double Dose Tuesday, right? We prayed this morning. Uh, our team is going to pray at 10 o'clock at the church, our leadership and pastors. And tonight is also the New Life Intercessory Prayer Team led by Pastor Martin. So make sure you tune in tonight. Uh, there's a phone call. It's actually a conference call prayer, so make sure you do that. And listen, put this on your calendar. Tomorrow's first Wednesday. It's the first Wednesday of the month, amen? So make sure you make it to the first Wednesday service. Listen, these services are so special. Pastor Rosa has a word. I'm telling you, it's going to bless you today. You want to make sure that you come out to this first Wednesday. And mark down every Wednesday, every first Wednesday of the month because we're gathering together for those special uh, services. And I believe they're special encounters with God that you may not get anywhere else but on that Wednesday because of what God is doing in our ministry. Amen. So make sure you're there and listen. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Walk in victory. And remember, if you're walking in the spirit, you won't fulfill the desires of the flesh. Have a blessed day. Thanks again for joining me here in the Walking in the Spirit program. I'm Pastor Carlos Rivera. God bless you and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day.